I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time watching with us. Uh, maybe you remember a situation in Marion, Utah, back in 1979. John Singer, he had taken his children out of school, had been practicing polygamy, and, and there was a standoff, and he ended up getting shot and killed. And then about eight, nine years later, Adam Swap... Um, came to that same Marion compound, they called it, and uh, also had an interaction with the police. We'll hear more about, or with the sheriff or whoever, the, the law enforcement. We'll hear more about that. I've, I've got Adam Swap here, and I'm so excited. The next two episodes will be with him, and uh, just a wonderful, rich story that, uh, that I think you'll be very interested in. So, Adam, thanks for coming up. And, it's my pleasure. And coming all the way from... Fairview. Fairview, Utah, so we appreciate you coming, and as we usually do, we get started kind of with where you were born and, and uh, your Mormon roots a little bit. Were you born here in Utah? Salt yeah, um, I was born and raised in, uh, in Salt Lake City on the avenues. Okay. Um, we lived on 76 L Street in a home that we found out later was actually a polygamous home. How, how uh, next, ironic. <laughs> next to the, the house right next to us, a uh, guy had two wives at the turn of the last century. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was raised in a modern-day church. I uh, went to uh, 21st North Ward. Your parents were active and, in the church? And, yeah, mm -hmm. at the time they were active. Mm -hmm. and uh, Brothers and sisters, how many? Um, I have... Uh, Seven uh, siblings, one sister, and six brothers. Where do you fall? I'm oldest. You're the oldest. Yeah. Huh? Okay. And my sister is second. <laughs> and, All right. Um, so just deacon, teacher, priest, the whole stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I, when we were, when I was twelve, um, uh, we moved out of the city, down to Fairview. Something yeah. about your dad wanted to live on a farm or have a yeah, farm. Yeah, huh? we, uh, I grew up in the 60s and there was a lot of turmoil and, and uh, it was get out of the city because the <laughs> bad times are coming. All basically. the influences and stuff, right. yeah. So how was, how was life on the farm? Did he raise cattle or no, sheep? Or? No, it was, uh, it was just a little uh, acre and a half. Oh, okay. uh, and my dad is a school teacher, was a school teacher, and uh, it was basically just to get us out of the city and, and okay. raise us in a rural rural setting. Okay. Right. Well, I know you had some interesting experiences there. You met a, a polygamous family uh, or, or some people who yeah, were polygamous um, down there. It was uh, back in Salt Lake growing up. Um, we never really heard about polygamists, uh, fundamentalists. Yeah. You, you had heard about polygamy, yeah. um, but that was something we that happened way back in the 1800s. Right. And one of the things that happened as I was growing up that was kind of a, a milestone was I remember my dad 
questioning the status of the modern day church. And I remember because that of there the was ninety thing. I didn't really know fully what it was while in Salt Lake as a kid. Yeah. But I know that there was some uh, conflict in the home. In over, his thinking. Yeah. Okay. And didn't really know what was going on. I, I remember my grandmother saying something about my dad having a flag next to his name on the church records <laughs> because he'd been questioning and that always stuck with me. I always saw in my my so kid head okay. was a flag. <laughs> take take but, off uh, <laughs> Mr. Swap, Brother Swap. Yeah. <laughs> but the the whole Mormon experience, it was something that that's all we knew. Yeah. You know, growing up in Salt Lake, it was the 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 epicenter of Mormonism. Sure. And as a kid, you know, we lived on the avenues. And that's the oldest neighborhood basically in Utah. That's, yeah. uh, and we were surrounded by all of the tokens of Mormonism. You know, the Salt Lake Temple was just west of us. And we had, we'd go up and play in the, uh, uh, the city cemetery. I'm not sure of the name. Yeah, Salt Lake City Cemetery. Um, yeah. And that's where all the old... The prophets are yeah, buried. Prophets and, and, yeah, prophets, you know, yeah. and we'd go up and look at their headstones, and some of them were very big. Yeah. And uh, we also would go to Temple Square as kids, you know. We, we many times went to a conference in the old tabernacle. Sure. And uh, it was all just, it was just part of life, you know. It was in our DNA. It was everything we knew. There was that one church that was, I don't know if it's Catholic or not, but it's on South Temple. Yeah. That I had heard that Brigham Young had helped pay for its building. Oh. And that was about the only other religion we ever even knew about, you yeah. know. Um, well, I think you, you said that if there was anything out there true, the, the truth was... Well, that, just that's what we were taught. Assumed. Mormonism um, is all truth. Yeah, and if it's true, then it's Mormonism. Yeah, I believe and that. And so, growing up, I mean, always believed that it it could stand against anything. Sure. Uh, scrutiny, questioning, you know, uh, and that was what my dad was doing was questioning. Yeah. And uh, that was. You know, that's where the, the fundamental beliefs of Mormonism started to, you know, come out. Is if, if this is true, and if it can stand scrutiny, then questions such as the 132nd section, 132nd section of the Doctrine and Covenants, um, in a plain reading, it definitely requires polygamy. Yeah, and you mentioned the Adam God theory at some point right, too. And right, right. The same if, thing where you have this: the prophet teaches one thing, and that's what is right. required. If, How if can a, that change? Exactly. If a yeah. if an earlier prophet um, speaks something, um, then it has to stay in line. Of any other latter prophets have to stay in line with that. If God and truth are the same, yeah. um, when they start to contradict each other, <laughs> then uh, that's when the questions arise. Yeah. So you get down there to Fairview, and are you still active in the church? Is your father active at this point? And um, is he questioning? But yes. Um, there st we go to the ward down there, an old stone building, and uh, not much really happens. Uh, my dad is more investigating, and it was really hush-hush. And back in the 60s and 70s, yeah, that wasn't it. There wasn't much, I mean, right now, I know San Pete County has one of the highest percentages of Mormons, mm -hmm. and, but back then it was even higher. Oh. And you, if you lived there and you wanted to have any social life whatsoever, it revolved around the church. Yeah. And so the idea of questioning, uh, even from a fundamentalist view, was you kept it real quiet. Um, 
it was not something that you brought up because yeah. you'd be ostracized okay. in it. So what happens to you along the way here then as you get older and well there's a few things that stand out in my mind that uh, I remember I had a friend uh, his name was Stephen I was going to junior high and the junior high at the time was over in Moroni and we'd take the bus from Fairview to Moroni yeah. about I don't know 15 miles and he told me in the morning he said I've got something I, I want to tell you <laughs> and I was like Okay, uh, what is it? And yeah, I can't tell you. Oh, after he teases you? <laughs> yeah, and it was like, it was so serious. And I remember different times throughout the school that day, I asked him, Stephen, what is it? And oh, I can't, I can't tell, tell you. you. <laughs> Finally, at the end of the day, I remember grabbing his coat and kind of slamming him up against the bus and said, Stephen, tell me, what is it? And he said, okay, I can only tell you this. Uh, my dad said that Adam is our God. And that was it. And yeah. I says, what? What do you mean? I don't, what does that mean? Yeah. And if, if it hadn't have been prefaced by all that mystery, it probably wouldn't have meant anything to me. But I remember going home and asking mom, and mom had no idea what I was talking about. She says, you'll have to ask your dad. And I remember them talking, and I remember they went in the other room. <laughs> and talked about it. And Dad came out and says, uh, I'm not going to tell you. And I says, what do you mean? And in our home, there were no, we could talk about anything. Um, at least I, He was well read and yeah, studied and yeah, school he, teacher and yeah. everything. So. And we would discuss everything, yeah. you know. Uh, there was nothing that we couldn't discuss. And this was the first time he said, I'm not going to tell you. And I'm like, Speaking of red flags. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I says, Dad, you got to tell me. What do you mean you're not going to tell me? Yeah. And I, I forget fully how it came about. He says, okay, I'll, I'll do this. He had a set of the Journal of Discourses. And he said, uh, I'll let you read it for yourself. And I read Brigham Young's uh, discourse on the Adam God doctrine, the, the famous, I think it's page 50. Was 51 in, in volume, volume one. one. Yeah. And it's basically Adam is our God and the only God with whom we have to do. <clears throat> and that that really stuck in my mind back then. And that was kind of a kind of a turning point. Um, the other big turning point was in 1978 when the, the church gave the blacks priesthood. <clears throat> now uh, my dad had a lot of fundamentalist books that he had gotten, had a little library, but I wasn't supposed to read them. Mm -hmm. And I'd sneak in when they were gone, and I'd get books out, and I would read them. <clears throat> and I'd read about what uh, Brigham Young said about the blacks, mm -hmm. that uh, they, they had a, a cursed skin, and, and the curse is in the darkness of the skin. And uh, here again, a change in doctrine. What a, right. what a prophet, one prophet would say compared to and another prophet. Of course, that's ridiculous, yeah. but that's how I believed back then. And it was if this is true, and, it's an e and truth is eternal, then how can one prophet totally contradict another prophet? Yeah. And uh, seems, that was. Seems very flexible, doesn't it? That was kind of a big one. <laughs> yeah. it, and really, it, was, it wasn't just with our family. That was, I don't know if you remember yourself when, when 1978 oh, sure. came. Yeah. There were a lot of people that actually left the church then because that, of that, uh, because yeah. of that uh, yeah. change in doctrine. Yeah. But, so 19, how, how do you then come to hear about John Singer? And, and that well, 1978, 1979. Um, he, right around that same time, um, he starts to appear on the news. And it's... Uh, and you became aware of it through the news? Yeah, okay. through the news um, and through talk radio. Okay. And uh, there was quite a bit of controversy about it. And, you know, he was this uh, 
rugged individualists that have built a cabin yeah. up in the mountains, and uh, it just caught my attention. And uh, I remember wanting to go up and help. In fact, I had planned to go up. I don't know, I was just a kid, but wanted to do something. Were you 17, 18 yeah. at this time? Yeah. And, uh, and then he got killed. Mm. And it was like, wow. And there was a lot of, uh, a lot of talk about it, you know, uh, a lot of controversy. And I didn't go up there then. Um, that, sp uh, that year I went to the University of Utah and I really started to search out um, Mormonism, Mormonism and, and wanting truth. Um, I, I think I should go back and address a point too. When I was a kid and living in Salt Lake, um, and I was pretty small, and it's funny, this really sticks in my mind. Um, we were coming out of from church, and uh, I remember jumping out and almost getting hit uh, by a car. And I remember my dad saying, boy, do you want to die? And the idea of death had never been presented to me. I, I, that, I think that was the very first time I'd ever thought about it. And I, I remember thinking, die, death, what, what is that? He really hadn't had any and, family members. And I remember or... my little sister, she kind of was like, you don't know what that is? I rem she's always been a little bit one step ahead. Your little see. sister. Yeah, <laughs> she's, she's a year younger Those than Those little me. sisters. Yeah. And I says, no, I don't know what that means. And I remember my mom saying, you don't know what death is? And uh, I said, no, mom, what is it? And she says, well, we all die. And I says, well, what do you mean die? And she says, well, you either you grow old you, or you get sick or you have an accident and you die. And I says, well, so what does that mean? She says, well, after that, you either go to heaven or you go somewhere <laughs> else. You know, I, Hell wasn't a really big concept in Mormonism. Right. But if you wanted to go to heaven, and I says, well, Mom, how, heaven, what is that? And I remember the conversation, even in a kid's mind, but what really stuck with me was if you want to get to heaven, there are certain things you have to do, and you have to work hard to do them. You have to go to church, you have to be good, you have to live the commandments, and you have to get married in the temple if you want to, to live. And so that was something that, even as a small kid, that was something that kind of started me on a path to want to get to heaven. And as I later learned it, that would be the highest degree celestial of the kingdom. celestial kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. So, and in Mormonism, that is it. You, it's on you. It's on your shoulders. If you want to get to heaven, yeah. you got to work to do it. And you got to be righteous. And, and you, you have a little prayer that you said all the time. Always. What, what was yeah. that? God take us on a path that we might obtain into the highest degree of the celestial kingdom, no matter how hard or difficult. And that prayer come back to haunt me. <laughs> well, I think one thing that I've, I've been impressed with your story and, and talking to you is, is the conviction that you always had. I mean, you had a dedication to principles and uh, just when you you just knew what was right and, and move forward and you were convicted to uh, to do what you thought God wanted you to do. That is, I can honestly say that the course that I did pursue, um, I did it with all my heart. Yeah. And it was... Uh, it led us down a pretty hard path. Well, it's a, it's a joyful path now, and yeah. so we'll get to that too. So you end up going up to the compound, though, after John's past been killed. 
Yeah, um, I, I had a uh, cousin uh, about seven years older than me, and uh, him and his wife had heard about it, and he was kind of searching in the fundamentalist thing at the same time, and we did a lot of things together. And I remember seeing Heidi, uh, John's oldest daughter, on television, and I did say, just out of the blue, I'm going to marry that girl. <laughs> That's actually something that happened. And oh. it was probably about 13 months after John's death that I finally went up there. I went up there with my cousin. I remember um, his wife made a big pot of chili, and we went and picked up uh, John's mother, Charlotte Singer. She lived in a in a uh, kind of a retirement community in North Salt Lake. You picked her up to go to this. To dinner? go up to the. Had Singer. you met her before? Never met her before. Um, you just felt kind of a spiritual, yeah, we, emotional we, connection, I guess. We with, did, with yeah. The, and swap, I remember we were in a little Toyota pickup, and back then they were really little. <laughs> And we had my cousin and his wife and Grandma Singer and myself in this little cab. And I remember Grandma all the way up there complaining about her shingles. Okay. And it was in the middle of the winter. And we got stuck when we went up there at the bottom of the lane. Right. But uh, that started my relationship with the Singers. Okay. You end up marrying Heidi. Yeah, about 11 months later, um, oh. I married her, and uh, we started having a family. Okay. And we lived in one of the homes up there. John had built three other homes besides the uh, log cabin on the property. And now, was there any question in your mind, I'm not sure quite how to say this, that the LDS church was true, that the, at least Mormonism was true? I don't know that you're questioning the mainstream church, right. but um, the polygamous uh, there's so, side of there's it. There's so much history that we gloss over. I know, now. we're covering so and, little. But the idea of obtaining under the highest degree of the celestial kingdom, of finding out what the truth was, never ever was it seeking outside of Mormonism. Joseph Smith and the Book right. of Mormon. Right, that was, that was just down. locked in. That was rock solid, yeah. or at least I thought at the time. Right. And it was, it took me quite a while to ever even break that view. Um, that perhaps there's something outside right. of. Right, yeah, that, well, <clears throat> that, took, that, that took God. Well, I, I know we are covering over covering over very quickly a lot of stuff, but one thing I wanted to go back on is you had a kind of a, a sense about Brigham Young's desk. Could you share that with everybody? Oh, yeah. Um, we went a number of times to the Beehive House. Yeah. And I recall that there was a, there was a desk there, a real elaborate desk with all of these little cubby holes and, and, uh, drawers oh, and boy. stuff and and I remember that Brigham Young had um, had a, a sermon I had read quite a bit of the journal of discourses and in one of the sermons he says if there's something in here that you don't understand um, anything that I preach he says rather than uh, dwell on it or? rather than turn against it right. or go yeah. against it he said I want you to roll it up and pigeonhole it come back to it later and uh, so that was just kind of my visual in my head. So anytime you had desk. one of these things, polygamy, Adam, God, right. blacks and well, the priesthood, you just slipped it into the desk. Right, so the contradictions, yeah. you know, and as, as you progress in Mormonism, there are so many contradictions and you don't realize Fills how up that full desk. that, yep. <laughs> There was a lot of contradictions. Okay, well, I didn't mean to jump too far back, but I thought that was, had, was kind of an interesting thing. And it, it, it's something we call the shelf now. I guess right. some of us are yeah. saying put things put on, it the, on shelf the shelf and it, yeah. it gets so heavy. So so uh, after you've married Heidi and then you have begin having family, you decide to practice polygamy, right? Yeah. Um, and three years later, you... Three years later, I married... married uh, Heidi's sister Charlotte. Okay. And uh, her and I have had one child together. Okay. And 
we, Charlotte and I are still together, and, and uh -huh. uh, Heidi left me, well, it's been, what, probably 27 years right ago. After, right, right after. Right after. Uh -huh. Okay, we'll cover prison. that probably next time. But let me ask you a little bit about, uh, you know, I know you've mentioned everything is tied around Mormonism. Anything mm -hmm. that was true was mm -hmm. all that. How did you feel about Jesus at, at this time? If you can kind of think back on your mentality there, did you have um, a... Jesus was... There was almost a jealousy thing because there was this, in Mormonism, there was this great council. And, uh, and there's our elder brother. Huh? And he was basically <laughs> born first, spiritually born first. Yeah. And it was, if I had been born first, I could have been Jesus in Mormonism. And so it was like, well, he went and did it. And he was not much other than he was the elder brother that paid our price, kind of a universal salvation. It was good. It was uh, because of his death on the cross. Basically, he paid for the right for everybody to come back to judgment, yeah. I guess. It was, it was never really clearly defined, and it wasn't, Jesus wasn't, uh, because he was a created being, and he was firstborn. Um, well, we had to do all of our own work, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, he helped, sure. and, and I certainly hoped that he would help to make up the difference what I couldn't do. Yeah. And uh, God has resurrected and stuff. Right. But, yeah. yeah, he did some basic groundworks, and then you, you kind of used it as a talisman on the end of your prayer, you know? And I listen to a lot of the Mormon prayers now, and it's like, you say the prayer, and then that last part is just kind of blended in, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Yeah. You know, it's kind of not, it's, wow, Jesus, do you know who he is? <laughs> He's God. He is the creator. He is, yeah, we have he is everything. We have a different perspective now, right. don't we? It took me a long time to, that was yeah. one of the later things, even when, even when I came out, it was a, a progression. It yeah. was... Yeah. It was so... Well, Adam, surprisingly, the time is already gone, and we haven't even covered a, a bit of what you need oh. to share with us. So, anyway, we appreciate you watching, and as I say often, you're following the gospel of... Jo the Mormons are following the gospel of Joseph Smith, not the gospel of Jesus Christ, and hope you'll join us again. We've got, we'll have some more with Adam Swap. Thank you.